experiment of irresistivity. The purpose of this experiment to find the resistivity of unknown materials. Apparatus of this experiment is copper wire, nichrome wire, wire, micrometer, period port, a meter and voltmeter meter sticks. Theory the resistivity of a material depends on nature of material. It is a material constant can, can be calculated for any material by measuring the resistance. The cross sectional area and the length of area made of that material. The calculation of the resistivity from this parameter can be done by this formula and R is resistance A cross sectional area L is the length of this section A wire that carries an electric current like this and charges are supposed to flow through this wire like this and they form an electric current what factors can make this motion for these charges more difficult or more easy first of all if I compare for example two different wires of different thickness like this the upper wire is thick the lower wire is the upper wire is thin the lower wire is thick we can simply and easily see that charges in the lower wire which is more thick they have more space to move more space to move means they face less resistance motion is easier because they have more space so we can say that resistance for any wire depends on the area of its cross section which is the area of this circle the circle that represents the cross section of the wire and this is an inverse proportionality which means if we make this area larger the resistance becomes smaller and if we make, make the area smaller, the resistance becomes larger. This is an inverse proportionality. So we can say a, a resistance depends inversely on the area. So it depends on one over the area. This is number one. Now the second factor on which the resistance depends is the length of the wire. So if you compare two wires of the same area, this one and this one such that they have the same the same area exactly but one wire is longer than the other the length of the wire of course it's very easy to see that charges in the longer wire <coughs> will face more resistance because they need to travel longer distance so they will suffer from the, the resistance for a longer distance so here we say that there's a direct proportionality between the resistance and the length. If you increase the length, the length becomes more, the resistance becomes more. If the length becomes less, the resistance becomes less. So these are two factors. Now the third factor in which the resistance depends is the type of the material. The third factor on which the resistance depends is the type of the material. Type of the material. On the type of the material is called the resistivity of the material. And we will use this symbol for the resistivity. It is called rho. So you can find, for example, in the way. So we can say that the resistance is directly proportional to the resistivity okay now if I put the three factors this equation also can be written as resistivity equals if we uh, rearrange the unknowns we can say that resistivity equals resistance times area divided by the length 
and this is what we are going to do in this experiment. In this experiment, we will ask you to measure the resistivity of a certain material. To measure the resistivity of this material, you need to measure three things. You need to measure what is the resistance of this material, what is the area, what is the length, then you put the three values in this formula to find the unknown resistivity of the material. So, in this experiment, we will have a wire like this. And we need to measure these three things. First of all, measuring the length is very easy. We just need a ruler or a meter stick. With the meter stick, we can measure what is the length. Then we need to measure the area of the cross section, which is the area of this circle. This can be done as follows. First, we start by measuring the thickness, which is this. How thick is the wire? Now, this thickness, in fact, represents the diameter of the circle. So by measuring the thickness, we in fact measured this diameter. So then we divide this diameter by 2 to become the radius, since we know that the radius is the distance from the center to the circumference of the circle, which is half, half this distance. Then, after dividing by 2, we use the formula for calculating the area of a circle. So, measure the thickness, divide the thickness by 2, put your value for the radius in this formula. Square it, multiply it by by, this is the value of the area. Now, the last thing is we need to measure the resistance of this wire. To measure the resistance of this wire, we should do something exactly what we did in Ohm's law. In Ohm's law, uh, you remember in experiment 2, we asked you to measure an unknown resistance. So we will repeat this experiment to measure the resistance of the wire. So we'll have a power supply. And an emitter to measure the current. And in that experiment, here we have an unknown resistance. So in this experiment, we will replace the unknown resistance by, by the wire. So this wire, this wire for which we need to measure the resistance, is placed here inside the circle at the location of the unknown resistance in Ohm's law. And we connect the voltmeter here. Then we measure five values of V with I. We change the voltage five times. We measure the corresponding values of the current for each value of the voltage. Then we draw the straight line V on the Y axis, I on the X axis. And we draw the best straight line that passes through the points. Calculating the slope will give us the value of the resistance. So by doing this, we have the value of the length measured by the meter stick. We have the value of the area measured from the thickness of the wire. And we have the resistance measured by uh, Ohm's law from the slope of the straight line. Directly after having the three values, we apply the formula that the resistance of this material equals the, resistor, the resistivity equals the resistance and the area over the length. Now all these things will be repeated twice in this experiment. We will do it for two wires. One is made of copper. So we will measure the resistivity of copper. And one is made of something called nichrome. Another material called nichrome. So it's the same experiment, copy based. We do it from A to Z for cover, then we repeat everything from A to Z to uh, using the nichrome wire. So this is the theoretical part of this experiment. 
and now uh, let's go to the experimental part let me show you how we do the experiment okay so these are the two wires we are going to use this one is made of copper and the other one is made of nichrome this one and we will start uh, by measuring the thickness of these two wires now and since these wires are thin we must measure the thickness using the micrometer and I suppose that all students are familiar with this micrometer from physics 105 so I will start by measuring the thickness of the copper wire so I put the wire here without any pressure I can see that the reading is 0 0.95 0 0.95 in millimeters this is in millimeters so it is 0 0.95 millimeters now in order to be precise I will repeat but I will measure now the thickness from the other end Zero point nine seven. It's not, not here. I inserted the values for the three the three major diameters for copper and the three major diameters for uh, nichrome, and I inserted here also the length of the uh, copper wire and the length of the nichrome wire. Each is twenty four centimeters. This is something I will show you later on when I do the experiment in the lab. So this is uh, what you can see here is a holder. This holder is used to mount the uh, wires, the copper and nichrome wires. So we will start by mounting the copper wire first here. It can be mounted like this. Then we fix these screws. Okay, the cover wire is now mounted and uh, these two terminals can slide here to control the length and this one also. So I will fix the length such that this comes exactly at zero and this one comes exactly at let's say 24. Let me use the maximum length. You can see here a ruler and numbers so this is at 24 and this side at zero. So the length of the wire is now 24 since the current will come through these two terminals after being connected here in the circuit. Now when we want to change to the nichrome wire we should remove this copper wire and mount the second wire like this. Again, fix the screws, fix and mount at 0 and 24. So this is the nichrome wire now connected on the holder. Now I will show you how this holder will be used to measure the resistance of this wire. So as we can see, this is exactly the setup we used in the last two experiments in Ohm's law and in uh, series and parallel resistors the power supply connected to a resistance and two multimeters to measure the voltage and the current so all what we have to do is to repeat this experiment again but the wire should replace this resistance so we need to remove this resistance and just put the wire between these two ends and repeat the experiment to measure several values of voltage and corresponding values of current to measure the resistance of this wire by uh, measuring the slope of the graph. So I will use now this holder 
The copper wire is now mounted here. The length is 24 centimeters. And all what I have to do is to remove this wire from the end of the resistance connected here to this end. And I connect this to the other end. Now the wire becomes connected to the circuit instead of this resistance in Ohm's law. So the next step I need to do is just to do or repeat what I already did in Ohm's law. I must turn on the power supply, turn on the power for the two multimeters. Then I will move this knob to change the voltage five times. Voltage number one, measure voltage and current. Voltage number two, read voltage and current until I get five readings. After that, I will turn off everything. Okay, I will do this myself and I will put the five readings in the lab, in the lab manual in the table inshallah. So after that, I will remove this copper wire. I mount the nichrome wire here in the same place. Okay, the nichrome wire is now connected between 0 and 24 in this ruler. Then I will repeat, turn on the power supply, turn on the two multimeters, take five different values of voltage. We keep always the voltage uh, around five volts or less than five volts. So I will now do this myself. I will measure five currents and five corresponding values of the, vol the voltage. I will insert these values in the uh, table of our lab manual and I will show the data I got after I finished doing this experiment. After uh, finishing the experiment, this is the data I got for the voltage and the current for the copper wire. And I used very small voltages because the resistance of the copper is very small. And notice that these voltages are in volts and the currents are in amperes, not milliamperes. So you don't need to convert units. And after doing the experiment for the nichrome wire, this is the data I got. We notice that the voltages used are larger because the resistivity of nichrome is larger than the resistivity of copper.